Hi there, it's Josh Turner Guitar. Joshua Lee Turner. It's the other Josh Turner. Anyway, let's get started. I'm going to do a Q&A today because uh, it occurs to me that while I take pride in not really putting opinions on my main channel, because there are so many of them on the internet, it might behoove me to make my personality a little bit more three-dimensional. So, in the interest of that, let us dive in. I think this probably calls for like a little theme song. Should I do a theme song? Yeah, here's here's the theme song. It's time for Q and A because it might behoove me to make my personality a little bit more three dimensional. I receive questions uh, both through Patreon and from my Instagram. See what we got. Helena asks, "I'd really like to know how old you are and how long it took you to get to where you are. Also, how many hours a week you spend practicing slash playing." I'm 26 years old. I will be 27 next month. Uh, I have been playing since I was 13. I started playing in January of 2006, and um, so I suppose it's taken me precisely that long. Although, really, I st well, I started singing when I was about nine, which would have been in uh, 2001, I guess, was the beginning of that journey, if we're looking at it in the uh, full scope of time. Oh, and the last part. How many hours a week do you spend practicing slash playing? Uh, I think that number is highly variable. Practicing for me in, in these days pretty much looks like preparing for whatever my next video is. I don't sit down and play scales and practice modes and arpeggios and things like that because um, I just find that I don't have time and it's usually a more practical approach for me of if I want to do an arrangement that is going to implement a new skill or implement a new idea, then I'll practice it for that arrangement, which I can then post on the channel. Um, uh, I don't really know that there's a, an average number per se, um, but I think just as often you know, as I can, is the short answer. Ben asks, aside from the Beatles and Dylan, who are your biggest musical influences? Dylan's not really that big of a musical influence for, for me personally. Um, he's a big influence for Carson. I mean, you know, early on as a guitarist, a lot of my biggest influences were, um, you know, sort of the holy trinity that I talk about a lot of, of Leo Kotke, John Fahey, and Davy Graham, with, I guess, Nick Drake and Paul Simon being a close fourth and fifth on that. Those were certainly my biggest influences for a long time. And I would also have to include, you know, Brian Sutton and Tony Rice, Django Reinhardt. Yeah, I don't know. Those those guys are probably my biggest influences as, as a player when I was sort of in those foundational years. And nowadays, I don't know, I mean, I suppose Paul Simon a lot of people seem to think he's still a big influence. So yeah, Paul Simon, um, Paul McCartney. I'm always still influenced by by Bach and uh, and John Dowland uh, and um, and Jusquin Dupré. Oh, and then he also asks, do you have any playing tips that will make the Angelina solo easier? Well, the first playing tip for making the Angelina solo easier is playing it on the shortest scale length guitar that you have. Uh, and then for the sort of fast, like, diminished arpeggios and things like that, to start them slow with a metronome and uh, and build your way up. I mean, that's just a sort of all-around practice technique, but it certainly applies here, too. George asks, one of the most remarkable things about watching you perform is the stunning amount of talent uh, around which you are s surrounded. Uh, do you think this is a remarkable circumstance? Uh, or have you, have you been lucky or have you worked hard to find so much fine accompaniment? I would say that early on I was a bit lucky. Um, I was lucky insofar as I went to a large high school as well. There were about 600 people in my class. And uh, so just sort of by the odds, there were bound to be a lot of uh, kids with musical interests. And we all sort of gravitated together during that time. I studied music in college, so of course I was surrounded by talented musicians past that point, all it takes is, is just a willingness to say, hey, will you will you sit in front of a camera with me and, and record something? And, uh, you know, most people most people say yes. So Christopher asks, how much creative freedom has Patreon allowed you to have? Well, um, Patreon has given me, I mean, pretty much total creative freedom. I've been able to continue doing, you know, whatever the heck I've wanted to do. And my Patreon patrons have been incredibly trusting and supportive in that. Um, and, you know, it's also now made it feasible, you know, with, with Patreon in conjunction with touring for me to not have a day job. I know that somebody else asked about the wine shop. I worked in wine and spirits retail for about three years after I graduated college. And um, I, I quit last September. And it's basically no looking back at this point. It's, it's incredible. So thank you. Scott asks, I'm so fascinated by your home recording quality and ability to turn out these polished pieces. What do you recommend to your fellow musicians on how to learn the process, especially for the rank beginner in recording in particular? Uh, do you recommend any particular educational program or pathway? Well, Scott, uh, I, I found my way to recording and to home recording through a number of means. Um, I uh, took a couple of classes in recording uh, when I was in college, and I had a couple of friends who were really... Um, 
passionate about recording. My friend Sam Dorrance, who's been in some of my videos, my friend Andy Reilly, who's produced some of my videos. I learned a lot from those two guys, uh, sitting with them and watching what they were doing when they were mixing. Um, and then I, I interned at a couple of recording studios as well. But as a, as a person now, um, trying to get into that sort of thing, I mean, there are a enormous number of online resources. I really like um, Graham Cochrane's Recording Revolution website. Uh, he's a really great guy and I actually have learned a lot from that channel. And then there's also definitely a certain amount of trial and error and trusting yourself with, with you know, as you record something, does it sound good? And if it doesn't sound good, you know, the, the process of trying to figure out why is kind of half the fun of, of home recording. Start small, start with whatever mic you can afford, work your way up from there. David Bruce asks, do you see your YouTube career as a means to an end or do you think it's a new paradigm for how artists can operate today? First of all, I need to give a quick shout out to David who has an awesome YouTube channel himself and thanks so much David for supporting me on Patreon. I think for now I'm treating it as a means to an end, um, just out of a general wariness uh, towards the, the fickle nature of most online revenue streams. I think you have to be ready for the rug to be pulled out from under your feet. I do depend on it right now, uh, but my goal ultimately would probably be to be able to support myself from touring and merchandise and things like that, um, just because just, just because I don't have a ton of confidence that it will last forever. Marion asks, do you still own all the guitars we know from some of your videos, or did you sell some? Um, I still have, I think, all of the guitars that I've ever used in a YouTube video. Maybe should sell some, but uh, nope, still have them all. Oops, Marie is doing something really ambitious right now. We just need to check in on that. Man, you are playing a dangerous game, Marie. Yeah, I thought so. All right, so we're going to move to Instagram now, and we're going to go a little bit more rapid fire. Do you prefer 6 or 12 string guitars? Situation dependent. Philly anytime soon? Maybe? Hopefully? You name the location and I will probably be there at some point within the next year or two. New tutorials planned? Yeah, I mean, they're always in the works, but damn, they take a long time to make. Are you coming to Europe with Carson on tour? Yes. In August. Do you think there's a big difference between being self-taught or having taken lessons? Well, it really depends on the quality of the lessons, but in general, yes. Did you ever have private lessons? Yes, I've taken private lessons at two points in the past. Once when I was in high school, which taught me how to learn by ear, and once in college when I studied classical guitar and learned how to read sheet music. Always been curious about your triple O. Is there a story behind it? What made you choose it? Well, I mean, the only story behind it is that a lot of my favorite guitarists had played Martins. I didn't want a guitar as big as a dreadnought, and it was the nicest one that I could afford at the time. Do you think where you were raised influenced your music taste? To an extent, I moved to North Carolina when I was 14, and uh, that really, uh, it was around that time that I got introduced to uh, bluegrass music and the music of Doc Watson. Why does Paul Simon love the G to C over G transition so much? Uh, probably partially because it uh, feels really good to play on a guitar, and partially because uh, the one to four motion is like one of the foundations of Western music. Favorite shampoo? Head and shoulders. I have dandruff. What do you think about the difference between nylon and steel string guitar? Steel string guitar walks into your ears. Nylon string guitar slides into your ears. What guitar should I buy for around $200 to $300? You should buy a used Epiphone Masterbuilt. How do I get better at both playing and singing at the same time? Wait, we're gonna pause the lightning round because I get this question a lot. The way that you get better at both playing and singing at the same time is that you practice them together very slowly. It's a good idea to practice any musical idea really slowly. You have to break it down to its absolute components when it's not even musical anymore. And if you can play a song at like a third of its original tempo while playing and singing, then it's going to be much, much easier to get it up to speed. You have to literally figure out what note on the guitar corresponds with what individual note uh, in your voice you're singing at the same time, go note by note, and then go measure by measure, and then start to bring it up to speed. That's how you get better at playing and singing at the same time. Favorite bands currently? Um, I really like Kurangbin. I like Wolfpack. Uh, obviously, I like Vampire Weekend. Um, I like uh, Fleet Foxes a lot. I mean, the word bands sort of leaves out solo artists, I guess. But anyway, yeah, those are my favorite bands. What pickup do you use in your travel guitar, and in general? In the travel guitar, um, it is a pickup that was designed by the company that made the guitar. It's a three-element passive piezo pickup. It's sort of similar to a K&K. &K. Uh, I think that Journey is going to start selling them a la carte now, so you can actually just get one on its own if you want to. Uh, the only other pickup I use regularly is an LR Bags Anthem in my Triple O 28. In a raised voice so it sounds like a question would love you to cover American Tune? I have covered American Tune. What's your process of learning a new song? Well, I listen to it a lot of times, and if there are multiple versions of it, I listen to all of the versions of it that I can find multiple times. If you remade Sultans of Swing, would it be a better version or a worse version? Keep it up. I mean, it would probably be technically better in every measurable way, but because it would be imitative of my original video, it would be worse. 
Did you produce all of the songs on your recent album, or did you have a producer for any of them? Yes, I produced all the songs on my recent album. As good a place as any. Go check it out. It's cool. Will we get the album on vinyl? Yes, it's gonna be sweet. Stay tuned. Where do you get your song, uh, song ideas from? Well, I'm not sure if that means the ideas for songs that I cover or ideas for songs that I write, um, but songs that I write are only about my life and experiences because I can't write fiction. But ideas for my channel, I don't know. It's usually just songs that have been pinging around in my head for a while. What was the first song you learned on guitar? All Together Now by The Beatles, because it was the easiest song I could find in the complete Beatles Easy Chord book. How difficult is it to learn to sight read vocal parts? Got any tips? Asking for a friend. Sight reading for voice is the easiest type of sight reading. There's a book. Get yourself a copy of Music for Sight Singing by Ottman and Rogers. It's a drag, but boy will it make you better. Favorite electric guitar? Seriously? Telecaster. What do you prepare when you're about to collab with friends? I usually try and make sure that my arrangement is totally ready before I uh, meet up with somebody, but then be ready to adapt it. Status of Kingdom Jasmine? Well, um, Kingdom Jasmine as a duo or trio is... Uh, in hibernation for the uh, foreseeable future, but m my buddy Bob is uh, still making great music and uh, is going to be revamping the Kingdom Jasmine name and sort of ethos, albeit as a, a solo artist, um, so stay tuned, he's releasing some new stuff soon. How did you improve your singing? Well, I sang a lot, and I sang with other people. I think that's probably the best thing that you can do, uh, is learn how, to, uh, let's learn how to sing with other people. It'll make you a better singer when you're on your own. Also, if you're a guy, uh, fun fact that I learned from an opera buddy of mine, uh, your voice continues to mature until you're about 40 years old. Um, so if you, like me, uh, are, you know, 16 and really frustrated with the way that your voice is developing, give it some time. It'll probably get better uh, on its own, as long as you keep using it and keep practicing. What's your favorite wine? Uh, I've been really getting into orange wines recently. It's a very, it's a very trendy thing of me to say. Um, I also love, uh, I also love Rhone Valley blends and anything French. What's on your pedal board? So right now I tour with uh, an acoustic and an electric guitar. Um, I just use a Zoom G1X on multi effects for the electric uh, as a DI. It's foolproof. It's easy. Uh, for the acoustic, uh, I'm using um, an LR Bags Session DI and an Align Series EQ and a Boss TU3. Will the other favorites be making another album? Yep, we're working on writing it right now. Favorite sauce? Pesto. How do you play Ladybug? I should do a tutorial on that one. Tips on ear training. The type of exercises that uh, I practiced and found helpful were chord quality recognition, interval recognition, um, trying to uh, transcribe melodies, um, things of that nature. I'm sure there are apps for that now. Try those. Tips for starting flat picking guitar? Start with like a 0.7 pick, something not too thick, and then work your way up. Start slow and learn alternating picking. Most important thing for a folk player to learn, that sincerity does not take the place of technique. What's your academic background? I went to Montessori school um, all throughout elementary school. I went to a public high school and I went to Butler University and got a BA in music. Do you experience stage fright? How do you overcome it? Um, at this point, I've been on stage so much that I generally don't feel um, nerves once I'm on stage. It's usually in the build up to a performance that I feel nerves. I usually just overcome that by uh, trying to be as prepared as I possibly can. What was the best concert you've been to? The Ava Brothers at the Ryman Auditorium in Halloween 2009. Favorite place you've played? Might have to be Brussels. Shout out to you guys. How to find the perfect harmony for a song? Study Bach. What's the most challenging thing about touring and what's the most fun? The most challenging thing about it is figuring out all of the logistics. Um, I have a booking agent, but I don't have a tour manager, which means that um, figuring out how to get from one place to another, how to deal with venues, how to uh, how to find a place to stay and places to eat, uh, are all up to you. And so uh, all of a sudden, um, playing music winds up being the easiest part of your day, and uh, everything else winds up being a little bit stressful. Uh, but therefore, actually getting on stage and playing is my favorite part about it. What mics did you use for your record? Uh, the vocal microphone was a Vanguard V13. All of the acoustic guitars were recorded on um, a pair of SE Voodoo VR2s. Uh, that's also how the electrics were recorded. And uh, if you get the vinyl copy of my album that's going to be out soon, there is a full equipment rundown for how it was recorded on the back cover of the vinyl version. Can you yodel? I think the question should really be, should I yodel? What's your main goal slash aspiration with creating music? I don't know, just to have done my best and then move on. What do you hope to achieve moving forward in your music career? Immortality. Where did you buy your glasses? I actually get this question a lot. They're from a company called C. Uh, I don't think they make these ones anymore. They're like six years old. I should get another pair of glasses. Why did you look like a British guy? That's a good question, mate. How long do you typically practice a song before you record it for YouTube? Depends. Between usually about 30 minutes and a month. Favorite Beatles album and why? Probably the White Album, just because it's the weirdest. The best Beatles album is Abbey Road, but I think the White Album might be my favorite. Do you think popular music will ever be this good again? Man, popular music never stopped being that good. It just changed. Can you cover She Thinks My Tractor's Sexy by Kenny Chesney? No. And finally, very important, Coke or Pepsi? Y'all.
Moxie. All right, y'all, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the little bell notification. No, but seriously, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Now you know a little bit more about me, for what that's worth. See ya.